In this really short video, you're going to learn how to start using the commission module immediately. Now, if you haven't already done so, you'll want to go back and watch the first tutorial video that shows you how to configure your CDA settings for each office location. You'll want to take that step first. Once you've taken that step and set up your CDAs for each office, you'll have a button within each transaction that says generate CDA. Now there's per two purposes of generating a CDA within pipeline. Let's let me show you the, them real quick. So once you actually do generate the CDA, the end result will hop over here is you'll have a document called the commission disbursement authorization within that transaction. And you can use that to send to escrow or whoever's handling the closing instructing them on how to disperse commissions. The other purpose of filling out the <coughs> CDA page, the Generate CDA, is it also powers your reporting. So as you can see here, once a CDA has been generated, it also gives some it has a commission layer now within this transaction that shows um, what the agent was paid, uh, how their commission was determined, and what the brokerage was ultimately paid. And on the back end of this, we'll show you how that information, uh, that data is fed into other reports such, that, such as an agent income report, a commissions and closings report as well as an aggregate performance report, report as well as forecasting. So for now let's go ahead and go through the process of generating your first CDA. Now that we're back in this transaction, anytime you can generate a CDA for any transaction as long as the CDA form has been set up for that office location. So we'll go ahead and click generate CDA here in the left menu. And if there is a contact labeled escrow or title within the transaction, it will pull that information in. There's three steps to setting up a CDA. Four, if there's a referrer involved, those steps are listed above here in this progress bar or this navigation here that you see here. So let's walk through those steps. As long as there's a buyer already in the transaction, their information will auto pull into this form. The sale price will also pull auto pull into this form and you can edit that if that's the incorrect sales price or if there's been a price adjustment to the to the selling price. Um, if the commission summary is filled out it will indicate what it, it said and this is where you would indicate what percentage of the commission is going to your company. Now you can represent that as a percentage or you can actually um, indicate a specific dollar amount. Same thing with if there's any referring parties involved you can indicate that as a percentage or a specific dollar amount. So we'll go ahead and calculate and continue, which will take us to step number three, which is where we can split the commission between agent and brokerage and uh, add on any additional fees that the agent may be paying. If you've already set up agents on splits, the agent's split will auto-populate into, into this step where we can see that the brokerage is getting 20%, and in this instance, the agent is getting 80%. If you've also set up fees, you'll see your, your agent fees listed here, and you can go ahead and assign a specific fee amount if you want to deduct a fee from the agent's portion of the commission. Once you've entered your fees and your split between brokerage and agent, you can one thing to point out is you can also represent that as a dollar amount here rather than it express, expressing the brokerage's and agent's share as a percentage. So that's up to you. You go ahead and calculate. Now this step just gives you a breakdown of so far how the commission's being calculated. Um, as you can see here up above, it states the sale price, the gross commission amount as expressed as a percentage, and then it actually just breaks down the amount going to the brokerage and the amount going to the agent. Now there's a next, there's an optional step is if you are on the listing side and you want on that CDA to the commission disbursement authorization to indicate how much the um, brokerage on the buying side should receive, you can indicate that here in this step and or you can also specify any further special instructions. So in this first step you see here, you can indicate the amount that should be going to the cooperating brokerage. If you don't do that, uh, you can just leave that field blank if you're not in the habit of sending instructions to uh, the closing company on how the other side of the transaction should be paid. 
Now, if you notice, if you set up any type of instructions on your CDA settings for this office location, it will pull that information in, and this information will be automatically here. These instructions will go into the document once you generate that commission disbursement authorization. You can add additional text if there's any sp special instructions in addition to what we already see here that you want included in the document here. Or if everything looks good, you can go ahead and click Generate CDA. Now once you've generated the CDA, as we said, it will provide a breakdown within the transaction of how the commissions were calculated. Now each agent when they log in will only be able to see their own commissions, which are highlighted here in blue. Uh, as far as from the staff side, you'll be able to see all commissions, not only for the brokerage, but for all agents that are on this transaction. The other thing that happens once you generate the CDA is it will add a document to that transaction. Let's go ahead and open that document real quick, the Commission Disbursement Authorization, so you can see what it looks like. So there it is. It will have your company's information on there as well as your logo if you have a logo in your pipeline account. And it will provide specific instructions based upon how you set up the CDA on the Manage Locations page. As long as you upload a signature, which you're required to do in order to get to this step, your signature, whoever's um, signature you uploaded and their information will be on there. And if you are, if your company has the commission check dispersed directly to the company and then you cut a check to your agent, you will not see an amount that says payable to the agent. You'll just see the entire commission amount listed here. So that's the commission disbursement authorization. You can use that to send it right out of the transaction right to escrow or whoever's handling the closing. The other thing to point out there is this document in financial docs is only going to be visible to any office staff that have access permission to use this reporting module. Now if you want to make it visible to the agent, you can download a copy and then upload it to a different category, document category, so that would be visible to which um, within the transaction to one or more agents based upon how you set that up. Last couple of things to point out with this reporting module, if there's any uh, changes as far as the purchase price or any of the numbers change before closing, you can go ahead and delete this document. Once you delete it, what it what that will do is that will add these that will allow you to regenerate the CDA. It'll add that button back to your page that says generate CDA. So you can go back there and edit any of those fields and add the uh, correct financial information um, anytime prior to closing. So again, the two purposes of filling out that CDA is the first, it generates this commission disbursement authorization that you can send to the closer, indicate them how to disperse commissions. The other thing is it's doing is it's powering your reporting. So let's talk about that for a second. On your reports page, you'll have access to this financial section and the commission summary, the aggregate performance, as well as the commission closings and agent income report allow you to generate reports um, by office, agent, etc. So you can ask the system to generate an income report for an agent for the year. You can also tell the system what period you want to generate that report for. And you can also gen download a commissions and closings report for a specific period or for a specific office. And of course, you can download a snapshot of your year-to-date performance. That'll tell you how many closings took place, um, how much company dollar came in, how much uh, sales volume, and some critical metrics that help you better manage uh, your brokerage. And then finally, the commission summary provides you a snapshot as far as pending commissions as well as closed commissions year to date. So those just help you better manage the brokerage in terms of forecasting and seeing year to date performance. So I hope you find that useful. If you have any questions, again, feel free to email me. My email is ramu at paperlesspipeline.com. That's ramu, R-A-M-U, at paperlesspipeline.com.